Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Golden Astrologer Podcast. This is Deb McBride, and I am broadcasting from lovely Escazú, Costa Rica, where today is Valentine's Day, Sunday, February 14th, 2021. So happy Valentine's Day to everyone. And if you don't have a Valentine, I hope that you did something lovely for yourself. So Um, here we are and it has been really hot in Costa Rica. And if you're looking to get out of your snowy environment, come on down. (laughs) So, you know, it's pretty safe here as far as COVID is concerned. So I suggest taking a trip and coming on down because it's hot and it's not snowing and it's sunny and the sky is blue and um, we have very few cases of COVID here and I I welcome I welcome all tourists. So um, what's going on? Well, it's been an interesting week to say the least. It's been really interesting because of the six planets in Aquarius that we had the other day that I talked about last week. And we are still really zooming through the stratosphere, but things are going to shift this week. So what's going on? Well, we had that new moon and that Venus Jupiter last week. And while I thought that things were good and generally there weren't like, I didn't experience people with like a lot of negativity or anything. I did experience a lot of intensity. And I know a lot of other people writing to me said, wow, it's really intense. And it was really intense. And it's been really intense. And I think we're all kind of exhausted from the intensity. And that's appropriate for right now. It's all really, really complicated um, because so much is in Aquarius. And Aquarius is not the... uh, most relaxing sign. It's an electric sign. It really shows a lot of uh, high energy and somewhat frenetic energy. And it's really a a sign of a, a lot of movement. And we are really being asked to assimilate the movement of you know, out of Capricorn into Aquarius, which was, you know, the end of last year. And so maybe you feel like, well, I don't know what that Jupiter Saturn was about in December. You're in it. It's going to be, we're going to be in it all year. (laughs) And the thing is that they're still going to be relatively, they're not going to conjunct again, but they're still conjunct kind of now they're still conjunct and we still have a long way to go. And this is a very intense amount of energy with um, having the new moon right there and having the experience of, um, you know, six planets all lined up in one sign with, with, with that Jupiter Saturn that's highly, highly unusual, okay? So that's part of it. The other part of it is that Mercury's retrograde. And while well, Mercury is passing over points it has already visited, it's greeting new planets. Like the first time Mercury went through this area of Aquarius, Venus wasn't there. And now Venus is there. And what happened was that nice Venus Jupiter, but Mercury has tied them together now. So what's happened is that back on the 12th, which was Friday, Mercury went over Venus. So if you didn't experience the immediacy of Venus Jupiter on Thursday, you got it on Friday because Mercury came in and said, hey, Venus, let's chat and let's have a conversation about what is going on and what this is all about. So what this is all about, what's it all about, Venus? Um, One of the things that's really, really important is that the Jupiter-Saturn opened up the door to this whole bunch of planets in Aquarius. Now, oftentimes when we are in this time of the year, yeah, the sun is always in Aquarius this time of the year, and it's going to be there until this week when the sun goes into Pisces on the 18th, which it normally does. Okay, but, you know, usually the sun and Mercury are close together, so the sun and Mercury 
are in Aquarius at the same time. Sometimes Venus is not in Aquarius at the same time, even though she travels close to the sun. Jupiter and Saturn definitely aren't. And, you know, there's always a new moon in Aquarius because that's the first new moon after the sun enters Aquarius is always the lunar new year, Chinese new year, Tibetan new year. And, you know, so there's always a big celebration around the time that, um, you know, of the new moon in Aquarius, which we had on Thursday along with the Venus Jupiter. Now, why am I saying this is all opening up the door? Because basically Mercury is revisiting sections of Aquarius that, you know, Jupiter has been in and Venus has been in and, and it's now talking to us and letting us know what that Jupiter Saturn really is about in our personal life. Because these are personal, Venus is a personal planet, Mercury is a personal planet. What does it mean for you? So here's our, here's our homework assignment. So whatever happened on Thursday, maybe, you know, maybe it's just a pleasant day. Maybe it was just a hectic day. Um, it certainly has been hectic. I have felt it being hectic and I think it's just way too much energy in one place in the Zodiac, but, and it's my sign. I should be like, yeah, hey, it's great. It's Aquarius. But really it's a lot of energy in an, in an energetic sign. So keeping up with ourselves, um, it, it's been, a, it's been a challenge. So Mercury being the communicator, being the announcer, being the thinker and the articulator, Mercury says, hey, Venus, let's chat. And Mercury goes over Venus, right? So Mercury conjuncts Venus and Mercury says to Venus, you know, by the way, you and Jupiter were having a conversation and he, Mercury makes an announcement and maybe in your life, you get some information about Jupiter Venus. Maybe it's about money. Maybe it's about a relationship. Maybe it's about a friendship. Um, depending on where those things fall. Now, if you are starting to hear information that you're like, oh, that's what I need to do. Or, oh, that's what that's about. You're right on track. Because what's happening is the Jupiter Saturn means something for each and every one of us. Okay, so there should be some clue in these last few days that you received about what that means for you. So yeah, it happened. It happened collectively. It happened in the sky. It happened in our uh, collective unconscious, like I said. And it is really something that we are needing to look at more closely because personally, this isn't just events in the world. This There's a personal meaning to this. It falls in everybody's chart in some place. So, okay, so you have your new moon. You have your um, Mercury go over Venus and information was provided. It's like, oh, did you think of this, sweetheart? <laughs> and maybe you didn't. And so what's going on is that... Um, you know, Mercury is giving you an answer. And maybe you were questioning things relative to the Jupiter-Saturn since the end of December. And maybe there was some sort of confusion or just, remember, we keep talking about the unknown, the fact that we're still in the unknown with a lot of things, you know, um, in the world and in our personal lives, like what's going to happen next? So when Mercury comes to Venus, well, there's an answer or some sort of answer or the truth comes out as, as is what often happens during Mercury retrograde. Now, today's the 14th and Mercury went to Jupiter this afternoon. So whatever happened, what's ever going on is part of the same story. So Jupiter and Venus had a story and Mercury saying, hey, this is what the story is. So in these last days from Friday, yesterday, today, and probably tomorrow too, Mercury is telling you a story. Mercury is telling you what to do and, well, not what to do. It's not bossing you around. But it's telling you what, like, it's giving you advice or it's giving you some information that, you know, maybe you need, maybe you needed to see. And 
So I think it's really interesting that when when we had this amazing once in a year aspect of Venus greeting Jupiter, which is a really lovely aspect, and on a new moon, some door opened. So if you're not sure where that door opened, look in your life because some door opened. Now, the thing that's happening after that, which was Mercury walking over Venus, walking over Jupiter, giving you more information and greater clues about what it was that you needed to hear and learn um, about this, uh, this conjunction, this Venus-Jupiter conjunction. And so this is part of a story. Now, when I look at my calendar and I start to look ahead and I look at, you know, March, um, eventually now Mercury goes direct on February 20th, right? And Mercury, so, it's, you know, today he was talking to Jupiter, but what's going to happen is that Mercury is going to pass over that place again and he's going to um, revisit both Venus and Jupiter. Now, he's going to visit Jupiter sooner, interestingly enough, because um, Jupiter is staying in Aquarius. Venus is eventually going to go into Pisces in the month of February. And Mercury is going to pass over Jupiter again, like he did today, on March 4th. So, you know, retrogrades, they pass over a certain part of the zodiac. They go retrograde, they pass over again. Then they come back again. Mercury's going over Jupiter again on the 4th. So whatever information you gathered in these last couple days, there's going to be some experience of that again on March 4th. This time Mercury will be direct. So um, pay attention to that. Make yourself a note. Stick a sticky note on your calendar or some sort of reminder for yourself that, okay, first, first piece of business is pay attention to what just happened in these last few days. Did you receive information? If you did, what was it about? Was it Venusian and Jupiterian in nature? Did something open an awareness in you? Jupiter's awareness. Jupiter opens your mind. So Mercury and Jupiter really opens your mind. And ah, Mercury and Jupiter are asking us to be open-minded. <laughs> and Aquarians, it's interesting. Aquarius is, you think, you know, it's a really innovative energy. It's an open-minded energy. But Aquarians are pretty freaking stubborn. <laughs> well, you know, they're, they're, yeah, and they're freaks too. We are freaks. <laughs> freaking stubborn. So we're freaks. We're freaks. <laughs> People were talking to me about my chart a, a couple weeks ago, and I said, well, and they say, what does that mean for you? And I said, well, that means I'm a weirdo. Um, but we, we're not all freaks. You know, there are some Aquarians who may take offense to that, you know. But we have wild, outside-the-box ideas. Now, um, you know, Venus, Jupiter had some message for everybody, and Mercury is making it real. So when Mercury passes over Jupiter on March 4th, you have to think back to these last few days and decide what on earth happened, what information did you get, and how are you going forward with it? And did you go forward with it? Maybe, you know, you're going to go forward with it in a way that's not um, expected, you know? Maybe it's a different, you know, because Mercury's retrograde right now, and when it goes over Jupiter, it'll be direct. So here we are. Venus goes into Pisces on February 25th, which is not this week. That's next week. And then it's going to, um, you know, stay in Pisces. And Mercury isn't going to go into Pisces until March 15th. So Venus already has a head start. So for Mercury to catch up with Venus again, it's going to be a little while because she's, she's going to fly through Pisces and go into Aries on March 21st right at the um, equinox, you know. So there's the equinox that happens on the 20th, and then Venus Venus follows the sun into um, Pisces. 
I mean, I'm sorry, Aries. So that's, that's a big deal. But, you know, Mercury has to catch up. And that's not going to happen for a little while. So it's, it's going to, you know, Mercury will catch up to Venus because Mercury moves faster than Venus. But it won't be in March. It won't be in February. It's going to wind up being, I think, in April that Venus and Mercury will meet up again. And, you know, this is an interesting situation because we have one part of the story and then the other part of the story is not happening just yet. So the thing to focus on is, you know, um, you know, thinking about where you are right now and relating that to um, March 4th. Okay, that's the, that's the first piece of the puzzle. We'll get to Mercury and Venus at another point. Um, so, in the meantime, we are going to have uh, the big aspect of the year on Wednesday the 17th. And it's like, oh, Deb, halfway through the podcast, now you're telling us this. Um, no, but I had to talk about the immediate stuff first. Um, the big aspect of the year is Saturn squaring Uranus. And what that means is Saturn, the planet of restriction, duty, discipline, hard work, focus, commitment, um, you know, the patriarchy, the justice system, Saturn wants justice, and then the planet of rebellion. So Saturn is more conservative, Uranus is more rebellious. The planet of rebellion, they're going to challenge one another. And Saturn makes the aspect because it is the faster moving planet. So what this means is on the 17th, Saturn will square Uranus in the afternoon, about three in the afternoon, two in the afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, two in the afternoon, I think Eastern time. And you are really going to go through another story. So there's the conservative and the rebellion, the conformist, the nonconformist, the experience of where you need to stretch yourself. And that's important right now because essentially, so this is where things get a little confusing. Every sign has a ruler, right? So Saturn is in Aquarius and Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius. So Saturn's going to talk to the ruler of Aquarius, but in a not so charming way. And so this is something that is significant and it's going to happen three times. So it's going to happen again in June. And it's going to happen again at the end of the year, December 24th. But right now we just need to focus on February 17th and how February 17th, is going to give us an idea about what this story is about. So the first layer of the story is happening this week. Now, where we are playing small, where we are being too conservative, where we are not taking a risk, is all where Saturn is in its domain. Like where we, we're, we're afraid. We're afraid to step forward. Uranus is saying, you have to step forward. You've got to get out of your comfort zone. You've got to stretch yourself, which is also what Jupiter does. It helps us stretch ourselves. But Uranus is saying, sorry, buddy. Saturn is answering to Uranus because Saturn is in Uranus's sign. Now, yeah, Saturn used to rule Aquarius before Uranus was discovered, but it doesn't matter because Uranus is the one that has the answer. So each and every one of us, has to take where we are playing small or fearful or afraid to expand, afraid to sort of dive in, afraid to do something outside the box, afraid to rebel and, and do exactly just that. <laughs> exactly just that. It's like, no, I don't want to do that. Well, Saturn and Aquarius can get very stubborn and dig in its heels and say, I don't want to do that. That's not, that's not what I want to do. You know what? It's not fair. I shouldn't have to do that. Well, guess what? Uranus is saying, you got to step outside your comfort zone. Well, why do I need to do that? Well, because it's not going to go anywhere if you don't. 
Uranus, outer planets move things forward. They do. And squares move things forward. Nothing happens under the happy, sweet aspects of of sextiles and trines. You know, things are smooth, things are flowing, things are moving along, but they're they don't allow us to jump in, take a risk and say, you know, all right, I'm going to I'm going to dive in and do this as a po- those those provide opportunities. Trines and sextiles are the smooth aspects. They are 60 degrees apart or 120 degrees apart. And when you hear me talk about them like anything in Taurus is, you know, going to be a trine to anything else in earth like Capricorn or, you know, like all the earth signs, like, you know, you have Virgo, you have Taurus, you have Capricorn. Those make trines to each other. So that's why like Tauruses get along with Virgos and they all get along with Capricorns. And that's, that's a nice flowing aspect. It's an easy aspect, but Saturn and Uranus are not talking to each other in that easy way. And they cause us to make movement. They cause us to take risks. They cause us to get outside of our comfort zone and agree to do something that's going to improve our lives, make it better and somewhat innovative and think outside the box. And when we do that, we're going to be glad we did it. But there is going to be a story. So chapter one is happening this week on the 17th, which is Wednesday. So it doesn't matter. I could tell you it's Wednesday. It's already happening. It's here. You probably know something about it. And guess what? It's probably part of that Jupiter Saturn aspect that started on December 21st. And guess what? It's probably part of Venus and Jupiter meeting in these last few days. So what does it mean? It means you got to get out of your comfort zone. Think about what's happened since December. Think about what's happened this week and know that you are taking some sort of risk somewhere along the line and you've got to change your mind about something. And you're in a Saturn like this. This is, we, we got to change our mind somewhere. We can't stay stuck in the same time space capsule, you know, you can't stay in the, well, I'm not going to do that because it's not fair. And I'm not, I'm not up for doing that. Well, guess what? (laughs) If you don't, you're going to get frustrated and you're going to be mm, trying to bang your head against the wall and saying, why isn't this working? Why am I not doing this? Well, because you're not thinking of it in an innovative way. You got to turn the story around. So say, for example, you have a project and you are determined to make that project happen, but you want to do it this way. And the universe is saying, sweetheart, you've got to do it that way. You're like, but I don't know how to do it that way, but I don't want to do it that way. But you know what? I've done it that way and I'm sick and tired of doing it that way. I want to do it this way. (sighs) What are you being shown? What is the universe showing you? What are you looking at that's different and maybe uh, makes you go a little uncomfortable because squares are uncomfortable aspects? What is making you squirm a little bit? What is making you feel that you are being taken outside of your comfort zone and being um, given an opportunity that may cause you to hmm, get a little freaked out. What if I what if I ask out that person and they reject me? What if I go to the bank for a loan and they reject me? I don't like taking loans. Oh, that's a good example. I need a loan for my the business I want to start. Well, right now it's a really rough time. Are are, are banks going to give loans? No, they're not going to give loans. You could talk yourself out of it. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to go get that. I'm not going to ask the bank for a loan. They'll never give it to me. That kind of thing. Don't do that. You have to take the risk. So maybe bank number one says no, but bank number two or bank number three might say yes. It may be bank number five that says says yes. And do what you need to do. But you have to take the step. And it's a spooky, scary step. It's not like a, a step, oh yeah, all right, no big deal. You may not, you may like, and I suggest, you know, thinking about the step. And if you have to take a risk, you might want to wait a couple days. If you know what the risk is, you don't have to do it on the 17th. You become aware of it and you 
become aware of what you need to do and you become comfortable with the idea because Uranus is about ideas and Aquarius is about ideas and ideologies. You become comfortable with the idea of doing something a certain way. Well, that's not how I planned it, but okay. If this is what the universe is showing me, well, then I have no choice. Um, I mean, you do have choices, but it's like, you know what? If the universe is giving you an answer, you got to take it and go with it. Even if it's when you're not particularly, it puts a little bit of a, a sour taste in your mouth. It's like, okay, well, maybe I do need to go apologize to my mother. <laughs> um, maybe I do need to forgive that person. Maybe I do need to um, call someone that I thought was going to take initiative. But it looks like I got to do take the initiative. That kind of thing. And when you do that, you might want to wait until Mercury goes direct. So, you know, let's wait, just mull it over, digest it, assimilate it, understand it. Mercury goes direct on the 20th. And that would be in the evening, Eastern time, like, you know, 8 p.m. or so. So don't worry about it. Just like take the weekend off and deal with it on you know, Monday the 22nd. And in the meantime, you know, the sun's going to go into Pisces, which is very lovely. And that's going to be Thursday. So we only have a few more days of the sun in Aquarius. And then we'll go from, so last week we had six planets in Aquarius because of the moon. Now we've got five in Aquarius and then we'll go down to four. It'll be Venus. It will be Mercury it will be Jupiter and Saturn. And that is as of Thursday, um, once the sun goes into Pisces. Okay. So it'll go down. So things should start getting less intense. Now, um, I don't know about the rest of you, but when I go to sleep at night, it feels like I'm dreaming in like cinema scope or something. <laughs> and, and some, some stuff is pouring through my unconscious, the river of the unconscious in my mind. And I would imagine that other people are having the same thing, that you are waking up and you were like, wow, where was I in my sleep last night? And I wanted to address this in this podcast because I think it's one of the reasons why people are walking around exhausted and feeling so much intensity is that something's happening on a very unconscious level to each and every one of us. And we you know, we are sick and tired of the situation that we've been living with for nearly a year now, and we're ready to bust out. And that's part of Saturn Uranus too. So people are sick and tired of this restriction, restriction, restriction. And, you know, it could be a point where everybody rebels. That's Uranus. So, but in your sleep, in your sleep, you're diving deep. You're going somewhere because there's so much energy in Aquarius that how could you not be going somewhere? Now, when we go into Pisces, that's even more. We're going even, we're really swimming in that river of the unconscious. And what's going to happen over these next weeks is that, you know, Venus will eventually go into Pisces on the 25th, as I mentioned. So it's like one more week and then, okay, then we're, we've got three planets and then there were three, you know, and then there were three planets in Aquarius. And Mercury will eventually leave and we'll just be back to Jupiter and Saturn again. But things are going to move into Pisces next. And so things are going to move into the last two signs of the Zodiac where we have Aquarius and we have Pisces. And this is like your brain on mushrooms. <laughs> and I don't mean the ones you buy at the supermarket. <laughs> you know, this is something deep and profound and stirring in your subconscious, in your unconscious, in your being, okay? So by the time we get to like March and April, we're going to feel very different. And there's this big, like I've said these last weeks, the collective unconscious really gets, you know, it, that's where we have that big soup of everybody's you know, unconscious participating in something. And that way, that's where you you know, Uranus and Neptune get involved. And that's where Aquarius and Pisces get involved. So in these next weeks and couple of months, 
we are really going to be in that big collective unconscious soup. And it's going to feel, it's not going to be the sludge that was Capricorn because of the earth sign. It's going to be the enlightenment that comes after the sludge. Okay, so we all had a slog through the sludge, walking through mud. You know, you're hiking, you're going through mud, you're walking through a river. All of a sudden, some the, the clearing comes and it's like, oh my God, it's gorgeous. Look at the rainbow, look at the, look at the sky, look at the mountains. Oh my God, beautiful, right? That's what's going to happen after this. But right now, we are all deep in our sleep, working something out. And during your day, you're going to be like washing the dishes. And all of a sudden, you're going to be like, was that what I was dreaming about? Did that happen in my sleep? Wait, what is stirring this pot? Something's stirring your pot. So, you know, this is, you just got to deal with it. <laughs> you just have to accept it. Write it down. If things occur to you, write them down. You know, and then in a few months, you go back and you look at it and you say, wow, what is, what is this about? What's this crazy scene? Don't be surprised if you're passing through something in your day and you're having that feeling of deja vu and it's like, oh, this was in my sleep last night. Was it last night? Was it, you know, the night before? When was it? I feel like I've lived this. Wait, wasn't I thinking about this? And I'm finding things are, you know, it's synchronicities, but it's also something it's very psychic is happening to each of us. So if you're not tuned into that, I suggest you start doing some, <laughs> guess what, meditation and really being, at, calming your brain, being mindful. Um, my favorite meditations are by Dr. Joe Dispenza. I also recommend the uh, Insight Timer app, which is free. I have nothing to do with either of these people. Um, <laughs> and the Inside Timer app has meditations that go from, you could do two minutes, 10 minutes, 15, an hour, whatever. And it depends on the teacher and people give each other ratings. And so I would, I would recommend doing some meditation and getting to the bottom of where all of this is going. Because the more you meditate, the more smoothly your sleep and your, your stuff that you're processing in your unconscious is going to get, okay? So we're all processing deeply, 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 especially in our sleep. So I wanted to bring that up today because I've been feeling it for a while and it's not just because I do inner work all the time. I think uh, people are finding that it's intense, events are happening faster than they can keep up with and we've got to like ground ourselves get into nature, go outside in the garden, go out in the snow, uh, roll around in the snow, walk in the snow, hike, do something that's going to fulfill your need for nature because nature is healing. And when you have that fulfillment, you're going to be able to sort things out a little more smoothly. Um, if you feel overwhelmed, you know, relax your body, you know, go out for a walk, do some exercise, do something physical and just sort or just sort of get in touch with what's going on for yourself. Anyway, that's it for this week. I've talked enough. My name is Deb McBride. This is the Golden Astrologer podcast. My website is thegoldenastrologer.com. And if you would like to have a session with me, just go to that website, click book online and you can uh, set up a session with me. My Instagram is lots of videos about astrology. It's the Golden Astrologer. My Twitter is at Deb Astrology. I look forward to seeing you again next week. Have a beautiful Valentine's Day and thank you and gratitude for listening.